December's here. I have literally never been more ready for a month to get here. Yay. Anyway, in today's video, I am going to be putting on a full face of elf makeup. Not that kind of elf. <laughs> um, I am excited for Christmas, but no. <laughs> makeup and skincare brand eyes lips and face i'm gonna be giving it a full review you may have seen from my stories the weekends ago that i have already semi tried this so i already have a slight notion of how this is gonna go i know things that i like i already know color matching and stuff like that also know like mistakes that i made last time so we're gonna try and improve on those this time so let's get started let's see what i've got so i've got the elf Retro Paradise Primer Glow Oil. It kind of smells kind of pineapple-y. Oh, it feels nice. Okay, so I'm actually pleasantly surprised about that. Really concerned with it being an oil that it was going to be like really heavy oil. That it was going to like sit on my skin and it wasn't going to soak in. I did only use two drops because I was worried. But... It has soaked in quite nicely and it doesn't make my skin feel like more oily. Hopefully it's not going to make me look too glowy. I really don't know why I bought that. <laughs> then the next product we've got to try is the e.l.f. Poreless Primer. No. E.l.f. Putty. No. <laughs> I can't say it. The e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. Okay, got that. I was really intrigued to see what this one is like because the reviews on this one are like insane. People like rave about this one and say how good it is. And this is like meant to be one of their like most popular products. Very excited to try this one. Um, this one I haven't actually tried yet because I didn't want to have any preconceptions of this before this video. Literally like a putty. I know, shocker. Oh, but then when you actually put it in your fingers, it kind of changes to like a creamy mousse. My skin feels smoother. I have primers that make it feel smoother than this. It's hard to tell until you start putting makeup on, I guess. Lastly, for like the priming part, just because of like the temperature and the weather and stuff, my skin is feeling quite dry at the minute. So we're gonna go in with the hydrating coconut mist. This stuff smells lovely. It just smells like fresh coconut and it's just a really light mist. Just to like freshen up that skin, hydrate it that little bit before we chuck on a load of makeup. Quick spritzer of this over your face. Oh, it literally smells like being on holiday. It smells lush, this stuff. I love this. This is good. Okay, so I'm going to go in with the Elf Flawless Satin Foundation next. And I've got the shade Vanilla. Now, I don't know about you, but to me, that shade looks like it'd be pretty good match in the bottle to my skin. Maybe not. I don't know. To me, it does. With anything, buying online, colour matching is going to be difficult. But I find, especially during lockdown and buying makeup online, colour matching for me has not been my friend. don't think I have yet to buy successfully foundation online that has been a perfect match. This was not good. Match-wise, you will see. I don't think it looks the same on my face as it does in the bottle. So yeah, if anyone out there is good at skin tone matching and can tell me what my skin tone is, I would love to know. I think I think I know now that I'm definitely not a yellow undertone. Am I a pink undertone? A golden undertone? Neutral undertone? It's very confusing when you don't know what your face is. <laughs> it is trial and error, but it is frustrating that you can't just send it back when it's like, no, this, it's like clothing. It doesn't fit me. Can I send it back? I get it. I've physically put it on my face, but like, I, I'm not going to use it. It doesn't fit me. <laughs> it's annoying. Also, in my try-on, I tried it with my Beauty Blender and it didn't give me much coverage. So I'm trying it with my makeup brush today. Seeing if that gives me a bit more coverage because, as I said in my previous videos, I'm definitely more of a medium to full coverage person. No, this really is not a good colour for me. It's not looking, like, cakey on my skin. It does look... Good. So I do think with the right shade, this probably is a really good foundation. 
I would be tempted <laughs> to find the right colour for me. You do need to stipple it on with the brush in order to even make it medium coverage, which is effort. You, you know, I'm like, I'm lazy. I don't really want to sit here all night stabbing my face with a brush. So I've, I've built it up. You can still see my kind of like pink of my cheek that I've been getting from wearing a face mask in like shops and stuff. It really doesn't help that the colour match is so off on my face. It just looks awful. It makes me look ill. Maybe with the right tone of foundation it would cover better? Maybe. We'll see. Let's try the concealer. We've got the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer Satin Finish. And this, again, was one of their highly rated, really popular makeup products on their website. So I'm very excited to review this. Yeah, I did already find a few things that I'm learning with it. The doe foot on it is absolutely massive. Like, I already don't like to use to, like loads and loads of concealer so with a product like this with a huge doe foot you have to be really careful that it's not gonna just like deposit loads of concealer because then it becomes really hard to actually blend it out it's it's easier to put less concealer on and then blend that out and then add more as you need it it's a lot harder <laughs> If you've got loads of concealer on to then have to try and keep blending it out because it's just going to end up concealing your whole face, basically. I do like the large doe foot, it's quite cool, but it does make it hard to control where you're putting the concealer and how much you're depositing onto your face. There's less control of what you're doing with it. Okay, so it's much easier this time to blend it out. Last time, I I literally just <laughs> took it out, blobbed it on, and it put on so much concealer on my face that it actually made it really hard to blend out. So what I've done this time is I've actually wiped off most of the concealer and I've just put on the tiniest amount. It's made it so much easier because all you're wanting to do is just sort of brighten your under eye area. And then if you have like really deep, dark bags, you can just keep adding a little bit at a time until you're happy. The more product you use, the more likely it is it's gonna crack and like cake up. They're just gonna sink into your fine lines and it's gonna make it worse. So yeah, definitely with concealer, less is more. Next, that's my under eyes concealed. So for the setting powder, I've got the e.l.f. HD powder. So I'm just going to set my sort of shiny areas. I'm not going to do my entire face, just where I tend to get like oily, which is like my T-zone. It just takes that shininess away. Okay, so now I'm going to go in with the eyelid primer, the eyeshadow primer. So when I used this um, the other weekend, I actually used a makeup brush to brush it in, but I'm actually finding that it's going on a lot better with my, just with my finger. Okay, so because it's December and it's almost Christmas, we're gonna do a shimmery look. So I have got the eyeshadow palette in California. I have had this one for quite a while. I think it was a free gift a while ago. It was a while ago. I can't remember when I got this one. So yeah, I thought I would use this one because I haven't actually used this one prior to doing this full face. It was one of those things that I got it as a free gift and it just sat in the back of a drawer. So e.l.f. California palette and it is beautiful. It's got lovely shimmery shades. So we're going to go with a nice, really simple, just shimmery look today. Yeah, so I really like this eyeshadow primer. You can really feel it like gripping the eyeshadows. It's really good. If you don't normally use eyeshadow primers, I really do recommend using one. And I definitely recommend this one. It's really affordable. It works really well. Yeah, it just stops your eyeshadows from like slipping around. Okay, so I just wanted to keep the eye look really simple. Um, so I've just taken 
literally just one shade and put it all over the lid and just taking it along my lower lash line and then I've gone in with a slightly warmer shade and um, put the shimmer shade on with my finger. Brushes are really great for depositing colour but your finger is I think one of the best tools you have for putting on shimmers. If you want to get like the most out of a shimmer either your finger or wetting a brush. And then I've just gone in with a light colour shimmer in the corners of my eyes. So I've just kept it really simple and I think it just looks really pretty. Super simple eye look you can do with any palette. It doesn't have to be the e.l.f. palette. For my eyebrows, I have the Instant Lift Brow Pencil in the shade Deep Brown. I did try this the other day. It's very dark. I have dark brown hair, dark brown eyebrows, um, and I normally use a dark brown pencil, but this was very, very dark. I was very surprised. More black than dark brown, but it was a very good pencil. Really liked it. It was really easy to use. That I don't do a lot with my eyebrows because my eyebrows are quite thick already and they're you know quite long. There's not much to fill in. I just tend to make them a little bit longer. That would be my only thing. I would quite like a warmer shade of brown. I would use it again, but it's not my favourite. This one is done, that's what it looks like when they're finished, that's the difference. There is, there is a difference, it does, I personally think it just looks a bit neater. So yeah, that's my eyebrows done. Yeah, I do like the colour, the colour probably is closer to my hair colour than the eyebrow pencil that I normally use. It's just a lot darker than what I'm used to. Perpetually tan. I picked the lightest shade when I purchased this one. Again, the colour match for me is not right. The foundation is too yellow for me and this bronzer is too orange. It doesn't look too bad in the pan, I don't think. It might just be because it's against the yellow foundation. I think potentially if I had the right colour foundation this bronzer could look nicer. It could be the foundation that's putting me off the colour of the bronzer to be fair. Okay so that's the bronzer on. I think it's blended out better today than it did before. I would wear it again with the right shade of foundation. Definitely giving me some colour. I don't look quite so ill now. Okay so next I'm going to go in with the blusher and that's in the shade Always Cheery. This blush is very pigmented. So you just need a little bit. So now we're going to do the mascara. So I have the Lash Extending Mascara and I have this in the shade Black. There's a few different types of mascaras on their website and as I said in my previous video, I really, really don't like fibre mascaras and sure I read the description. I don't remember them saying that this one was a fibre mascara. I'm sure there's fibres in this, like there's bits in it. It doesn't say that it's a fibre mascara but it certainly looks like a fibre mascara. However saying that it didn't irritate my eyes and I wore it all day. Other fibre mascaras that I have tried in the past have heavily irritated my eyes, made them like red and itchy and just really not happy so I've avoided them like the plague. It's a lash extending mascara and on the brush it looks like there are fibres but it didn't irritate my eyes. For me it was a good mascara, it worked really well. I have a favourite mascara, it's not going to replace it anytime soon but I would use it again, wouldn't be my first choice, probably would be my second. That's a big shout for me because I'm super fussy on mascaras, I thought this was really good. Right so these are my my eyelashes right now with nothing on them. No, this is definitely a fibre mascara. You can see, you can see the fibres on the edge. It's definitely a fibre mascara. The thing that I love about mascara is it just finishes off a look. I think you can wear no makeup whatsoever, but you put a bit of mascara on and you just look fab. Anyone looks fab with mascara on. Okay, so that is one eye with mascara fully on. I really like this mascara, it makes a huge difference. I do naturally have quite long eyelashes, which helps, but I do still struggle with finding a really good mascara because the amount of mascaras that either make my eyelashes just clump together and I end up with like one giant eyelash, or like spider eyelashes, or they like spread them out and they look really thin and I've tried high street ones, high-end ones, uh, I've been trying to find 
like my favorite one for years and I've yeah I keep thinking I found like the best mascara and then I find a new favorite one but I have I do currently have a favorite one and it is good and I'm very happy with it and uh, I will um I will do a video on it soon and I will let you know what my all-time favorite mascara is currently but this one I am very impressed with it's nice. It doesn't spread them out too thinly. It doesn't give me spider eyelashes. It doesn't say whether or not it is waterproof, but the other weekend when I had it on, I went for a walk and it started raining and there was that initial panic of, oh my God, I'm wearing makeup I've never worn before. And I had visions of me just looking horrific, like panda eyes, but it didn't move, it didn't budge didn't go anywhere so I wouldn't suggest swimming in it but in rain it didn't go anywhere. If you're looking for a good lash extending mascara I would definitely give the e.l.f. one a go. I think this one was really, I was yeah really impressed with it. I think it's a good one. I do however think they should have that it's a fibre one on their packaging and in the description on the website although saying that if they had that I wouldn't have tried it. Oh. <laughs> And then we have the uh, e.l.f. Lip Plumping Gloss. Really like this shade. I think it's a really nice shade. And the lip gloss itself is really nice. Plumping wise, yes it plumps. But like loads of plumping lip glosses, it doesn't last for very long. <laughs> it's a very temporary plump. I don't have massive lips. I don't have a huge desire to have massive lips. I quite like my lips as they are, but I really like the shade. Um, what I like about this lip gloss though is that it's not like really sticky. It doesn't feel like everything is gonna get stuck to your mouth while you're wearing it, which I appreciate. Oh, it smells like caramel. I like this smell. It smells like kind of like a toffee caramel smell. It's a good smell. It smells really yummy. I would definitely wear the lip gloss again. To complete the full face of e.l.f. makeup, we've got the e.l.f. Makeup Mist and Set. And that's a setting spray. Okay, so then we're just gonna go with a quick spritz all over the face. And that is my full face of e.l.f. makeup. So yeah, the highlights for me were the um, hydrating Mist Coconut Spray, the mascara and the lip gloss I think were my top products um, out of the whole look and I would definitely use those again. Yeah, there genuinely wasn't any bad products. Really liked all the products, there was nothing bad. Um, it was just the colour match in the foundation that I, that was down to me picking the wrong colour. I think for the price of e.l.f. you can get a full face of makeup for a really decent budget and it's good quality makeup. I'd use it again, I'd use e.l.f. again. So yeah, I'll try and link as many of the products I use in the comment section. Let me know what you thought of the overall look. Also, don't forget to let me know what your favourite e.l.f. product is, especially if I haven't tried it yet. I would love to try another one. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!